Let us continue with the chapter 11, Enhancement of Food Productions, Lecture 8. So, last time we have discussed regarding the biogas plant, uh, where you have already seen that there is a uh, pit dig out under the ground and uh, if someone is wishing to, you know, insert a ready-made cylindrical uh, tank or you can uh, make a cement tank, okay and uh, which should be partially uh, you know submerged mm -hmm. into the earth crust that is it should be in pit and half of the area that is uh, uh, one third part of it should be above the ground okay and there is a uh, charge pit and there is a sludge pit where uh, the, after the fermentation process the sludge is going to come out and there should be a cylinder which is holding a gas okay so this we have already discussed now, the entire process of a biogas production is an anaerobic process, okay. So, all the processes are undergoes in an anaerobic processes and uh, um, there are three steps to form a biogas, okay. So, first is a hydrolysis or it is also known as a solubilization, correct. And second is a acidogenesis and third is a methanogenesis. These three steps are involved. So, hydrolysis, acidogenesis and methanogenesis. In different steps, we have to know that uh, what are the detail is given. Also, which bacteria are involved into these three steps and what kind of uh, compound is getting converted into which kind of product, okay, that we have to see. Okay, so first let us have a look. Um, this hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. This heading says that uh, hydrolysis means uh, breaking of water molecule or release of water molecule, or it is also known as a solubilization. Okay, the things are made soluble. Okay, so cattle dung is mixed with the water. It is not fed directly as a dry matter or a semi solid but it is mixed with the water so that is in a slurry form okay so let us see in initial stage raw material that is a cow dung is mixed with the water in equal proportion see if you are taking 50 percent of cow dung so you need to have mixed with the 50 percent of the water okay to make a slurry which is then fed into the digester that is our charge pit okay then what happens here? Anaerobic hydrolytic bacteria, uh, anaerobic bacteria, mainly what? Clostridium and Pseudomonas. These two bacteria's name have to be there. Okay. So these two bacteria, uh, they hydrolyze. Okay. They break the water molecule. Okay. Hydrolyzes what? They hydrolyze the carbohydrates into the simple sugars proteins into amino acids and lipids into fatty acids. So, as we already know that carbohydrates are complex one, complex organic matter which is broken down into the simpler one that is a sugar form and uh, proteins are broken into the amino acid whereas lipids are broken into the fatty acids. So, just understand um, this uh, carbohydrates are converted into sugars then uh, proteins they are broken into the acid also lipids are also broken into the acid so all the acidic medium is contained here okay so first steps is telling that you need to mix the bio that is a uh, cow dung along with the 50 percent of the water make it slurry and then fed into the charging pit okay and what bacteria is supposed to be utilized here is an anaerobic bacteria namely Clostridium and Pseudomonas. This thing I think uh, you are clear. Now what these bacteria are doing? They are converting carbohydrates into uh, sugars and protein into amino acids and the lipids or fats into the respective fatty acid. Correct? Now this thing remember very well? Okay. Now go to the next. Next step is called acidogenesis. As in the first step, we have seen that all acids, uh, acids as a simpler substance, they are formed. So, this acid has to be further digested. Okay. So, hence the second step will be acidogenesis. 
Now, in this stage, facultative anaerobic acidogenetic bacteria and obligate anaerobic organisms. Okay. So, three types of bacteria facultative, anaerobic, and acidogenic bacteria. Okay. <coughs> this converts simple organic material into acids. Okay. Acids like which acids? Is a formic acid, acetic acid, hydrogen gases, and carbon dioxide. So, you need to remember which are those acids are formed into second step and what are the gases are formed. So, after the using facultative bacteria, acidogenic bacteria, and the anaerobic bacteria, these bacteria are converting those acids those are in first steps all those compounds fatty acids whether it be amino acid these are converted into uh, another types of acids like formic acid acetic acid hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide now in third step all this acids that is a um, formic acid Acetic acid, hydrogen gases, and carbon dioxide. These are all getting converted into methane in a different proportions. But there are some gases are also found in a trace amount that we are going to see into the next step. Well, let's see the third steps: methanogenesis. Now, this is the last step where methane is formed. So, this stage, a uh, stage in which anaerobic methanogenic bacteria. Now, you need to remember which bacteria in every steps. So, uh, first step it was said that there is a Clostridium and Zydomonas. In second step, it was facultative, anaerobic, and acidogenic bacteria. In third step, methanogenesis, methanogenic bacteria like methanococcus, okay, methanococcus. They convert what this methanococcus do? They convert. Uh, hydrogen gases, carbon dioxide into methane. They convert acetic acid into the methane. So, let us see 12 molecules of acetic acid. This is a formula for acetic acid. Okay? These are getting converted into the methane. That is 12 molecules of methane and whatever is remaining that is getting converted into carbon dioxide. So, equal molecules of methane gas as well as equal molecules of the carbon dioxide is produced. Okay? Then uh, another formic acid that is H dot C double O H. Okay, this is called formic acid. So formic acid of four molecules they are getting converted into methane, and carbon dioxide and water molecule is produced. Okay, so you can see here the formic acid, the acetic acid, these are getting converted in different proportions into a form of methane. Now, lastly is a carbon dioxide and hydrogen gases is there. So, these are uh, combining together, additional reaction is taking place and they are making a methane gas and water molecule. So, at the last you can see that gases are formed along with the carbon dioxide and water molecule as a byproduct. Okay? So, these molecules, water molecules which are formed here, these are reutilized okay and carbon dioxide is found in a trace amount so it is also accumulated into the cylinder okay so this is what we have seen now we'll come to the benefit or advantages of the biogas so what is the advantages now it is it is very simple that we already know it is eco friendly why because it does not produce on burning uh, any kind of sooty flame. Sooty means which is which gives a carbon. So it is a carbonless fuel and uh, it is very cheap and safe to use. Okay, so it is a cheap, safe, and renewable source of energy. It can be easily generated, stored, and transported. Okay, so uh, it is safely transported. Second use is that it can be used for domestic lighting domestic lighting purposes cooking street lighting you see most of the street lights which are uh, you know um, planted on the roadside those are also uh, they are um, lighted with the help of these gases 
as well as a small scale industry it is used as a source of energy it burns with the blue flame and without smoke it helps to improve sanitations of the surrounding now how it helps to improve sanitation because you know uh, it do not produce any kind of smoke no pollutants are released into environment okay lastly is it is eco friendly and does not cause any pollution and imbalance of the environment so it is very good now whatever the sludge is left behind is again it is reused as a fertilizer or it can be used as a uh, again recycle in a charge pit so that again it can be fed into the fermentation process so this is the advantages of the biogas fuel now we'll see next how the microorganisms are used in different fields like a uh, biocontrol agents okay so role of microbes as a biocontrol agent so when we are talking about the biocontrol agent what does it mean biocontrol bio means living so if any organism who is harming the crops or the cultivated lands or any trees okay and causes a economic loss how one can overcome with this problem okay so um, there are we have already heard uh, enemy of the insects are also there so one organism when it is feeding on to the crop plants it can be killed or can be attacked or can be rid getting ridden off by the use of another enemy of the uh, of the microorganism okay so in it is it is like something a prey and predator relationship okay so one living being is feeding on to the another living being so this kind of a philosophy is adopted here so um, bio control refers to the use of biological methods to control disease and pests okay so there are some there are some plants which are you know uh, very favorite to some insects okay even pests now when i say insect it means it can be butterfly it can be honey bees or any kind of a larvae or um, which is feeding on to that plant okay that is insect when i say pest pest means it can be any kind of borer it can be any kind of a mouse okay mouse or uh, any animal which is harming and damaging to the plants correct so pest and insect both so to kill the insect we are using insecticide so uh, the traditional method was that we earlier used to uh, apply uh, chemicals that is a toxic chemical okay so somewhere it is harming to the soil to the water and to the crop plant as well okay so this way we are aware of now but this is not good for the long life so instead of that the scientists have decided to use a uh, any living organism which can feed onto that harmful animals okay mm -hmm. so prey and predator relationships is applied here so the natural method of eliminating and controlling insects pests and other disease causing agent is by using biocontrol or biological control okay so they are telling that ki it is a very natural method we are not using any chemicals we are directly using any microorganism which is feeding on to this uh, insect or the pest okay so uh, there are different different method there can be uh, another method that they can kill them directly or they can compete with them for the nutrition purpose or um, they can uh, you know uh, uh, kill them so that is the way so these agents are which are employed for this are called biocontrolling agent now microbes are one among them these microbes includes uh, now which agents are working actually the bacteria are there fungi are there viruses are, are there and protozoans these are the microbial or you can say a biocontrolling agent so microbes as a biocontrolling agent how they act there are three ways 
as I told earlier that they can cause a disease to the pest or whoever is infecting to the plant okay or they compete with them or they they kill them okay these are three ways either they can compete with them or they can kill them or they can cause a disease to the pest okay so these are three ways that through which they interact this is given that chemicals insecticides and pesticides are extremely harmful to human being and also pollute our environment that is why we have opted for the biocontrolling agent so hence the use of biocontrol measures will greatly reduce our uh, dependence on toxic chemicals and pesticides okay so let us have a look that which are those biocontrolling agents and uh, uh, how they are used okay so first thing is that some examples are given like bacillus thuringiensis that is in short it is bt now these are the bacteria it is used to get rid of butterfly caterpillar where dried spores of bacillus that is bt are mixed with the water and spread onto the vulnerable plants such as brassica and fruit trees so fruit trees are mostly they are vulnerable uh, from the pest attack and insect so that's why uh, they have adapted that they mix the spores of this bacteria in the water and directly spray onto the infected plants okay or before the before the infection also one can spray it so that the uh, it is you can say an, an advance uh, kind of a precaution is being taken okay so uh, and so brassica and fruit trees are mostly it is uh, used that is it is onto which the spore uh, spray is used now these spores are then eaten now what happened when the spores are spread onto the uh, fruit trees or or the brassica so that spores are eaten by the insect larvae what happened when this goes inside the gut that is the intestine of the larvae uh, there is a cry gene which is found in a bt toxin if you read uh, in a biotechnology there it is taught that uh, there is a cry gene which causes a toxic production on consumption uh, by the insect so it causes a toxicity into their gut as a result the ph level also increases and they die okay so uh, in the gut of the larvae the toxin that is called a cry protein is released and the larvae get killed eventually so this is the natural process of uh, you know uh, getting rid of this kind of pest infection or insect infection another is a trichoderma species these are free living fungi trichoderma is nothing but the fungi now these fungi are found in the root ecosystem that's called a rhizosphere these are effective as a biocontrol agent of several soil born fungal plant pathogens so there are chances that some of the plants you know they uh, for uh, you know more than 100 years they are being rooted into the soil so uh, there are chances that because of moisture uh, some kind of a fungal infection may take place so in order to get rid of with all that kind of problem there are bacteria uh, there are fungal colony uh, which are entangled and they are naturally growing along with the root trees and they are found that is that around the area of the root underground is called a rhizosphere so they make a sur sur some kind of a symbiotic association in such a way that they provide a nutrient medium to the plant and plants also provide a kind of a shelter okay so uh, uses of uh, certain uh, bacterial or sorry the fungal uh, colonies which protect the plants from the infection so uh, the fungus produces substance like viridine what is there what is so specific that this fungus they protect from the infection of other fungus see one fungus can feed upon the other fungus so the relation is very simple it is that the prey and predation uh, relationship correct so what the fungus how they protect the plant what is so specific with them what they do so they 
produce a substance like viridin, uh, gliotoxin, then gliovirin. These are certain chemicals which is produced by the uh, fungus and that inhibits the other soil bond pathogens attacking root, rhizomes, etc., causing root diseases. So, this is another example of trichoderma. Okay. So, um, you can see how the corn root masses in the picture. I will just zoom it out. Okay. So, you can just see corn root masses are there. Uh, with this is the fung uh, root without fungus and this is the root with the fungal uh, colony that is called the trichoderma. So, how bulky it looks see ok. Then another example is this is given in our textbook that is pesticides and their host. Pesticide means it is a kind of organism and they feed upon that particular host. Host means see pathogen is there that which is going to kill to this host that is the information is given here. So, what it is see? In one column pathogen another column host is given. Now, bacteria fungi and protozoan and viruses, four uh, microorganisms are given. Bacteria that is Bt and that is B papillae and B lantimorbus. These three species of the bacillus thuringiensis. genesis, bacillus are there. They feed upon caterpillars. Suppose any plants is, uh, you know, having invasion of the caterpillars. Uh, cabbage worms are there. See, cabbage are very vulnerable. Uh, in fact, uh, from the infection of a larvae and there are some kind of a pest, borers are there, they infect and do a huge economic loss, okay. Then adult beetles, okay. So, these are the host. Host means what? This bacteria, when when the spray of this bacteria is uh, sprinkled onto the plants or this, this particular types of a crop plant, these um, host means these caterpillars, these uh, cabbage worms and adult beetle, they feed upon this. As the spores goes into their gut, they die because of the toxin productions, okay. Then, another is given a fungus. Now, which fungus? That is Bavaria bassiana, uh, Entomorphothora, Pallidarosum and the Zoophthora radicans. These are certain fungus which are feeding on to the aphid. Feeding means these are the hosts which are feeding on to this fungus on an applications. So, ultimately they have to die. So, aphid croquis, these are hosts. Then aphid um, um, anguiculata, mealybugs, mice, white flies, these are all they are, uh, their invasion is getting ridden off, okay. Another thing is protozoan. Protozoans like Nosema locustae, uh, grasshoppers, caterpillars, kikis. These are killed by this Nosema locustae. Uh, now, when we talk about crickets, crickets is like something how you see a small parrot type insect. Okay, it's like a, um, of the size of, uh, uh, you know, um, grasshoppers only. Okay. So, that is the cricket, name is given cricket, it is not a spores, ok. Crickets, caterpillars, grasshoppers, these are all become a host. Viruses, viruses like nucleopolyhedroviruses, that is NPV and uh, granulovirus, that is GV. Caterpillars and gypsy moth, ants, wasps and beetles, invasion of all these are killed by the NPV and GV viruses. So, these now you can understand how uh, the knowledge of uh, you know prey and predation is important and using this knowledge one can adapt for the biocontrolling agent or uh, you know um, which is not harming to the environment. So, without harming environment you can treat the plants ok. So, these are very thing given. Next is given 
बायो हर्बिसाइड्स ओके बायो हर्बिसाइड्स मींस बायो मींस लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म हर्बिसाइड्स मींस व्हिच इज हर्ब मींस हर्ब बट द मीनिंग इज हियर वी आर डूइंग अ हर्बिसाइड साइड्स मींस वी हैव टू किल देम दोस हर्ब्स व्हिच आर नॉट नेसेसरी दे आर अनवांटेड दे एक्ट्स एज अ वीड एंड दे कंपीट विद आवर डिजायर्ड प्लांट दोस आर अनवांटेड वन we want to get rid of all those plants which are not uh, desired one which are unwanted so there are certain uh, uh, micro agent which you know kill them correct so weeds are unwanted they are now see in this uh, diagram that how this see this plant is our desired one and this is like a, a grass is growing nearby so see now when this grass is growing uh it is not useful for our purpose okay and it is competing with the nutrient limit uh, nutrient ph everything is competing with the healthy plant so half of the amount will be absorbed by this unwanted plant so we don't want to grow this plant okay we want to uh, get rid of this okay or we don't want this we want to remove it so what we do certain pathogens we feeds upon this okay So let's have a look. Weeds are the unwanted plants that grow in agricultural fields, ponds, lakes, etc. So weeds compete with the main crops in the farmland for water, space, minerals, light, air, etc. How light and air? If they are growing in between or nearby to our crop plants, okay, in 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 between the crop plants, so they they are somewhere occupying the space. they if they are competing with our healthy plants the desired one so they will grow in height and they will create a shed onto the uh, desired plant so they will obviously grow faster than uh, what we have planted okay so uh, they compete with the sunlight they compete for the space they compete for the nutrient water every all the basic requirement okay so and also acts as a collateral host for several pathogens collateral host for several pathogens means even if our desired crop which we have planted already is not a host for the uh, is is not a host for the pest okay but because of this weeds they become a host okay and they are getting damaged so microbes are also used as a herbicides okay so many dicot herbs that grow in the field of cereals as weeds it can be killed by certain microbes so they are telling we have already uh, uh, you know planted a monocot that is cereals variety okay cereals variety is like jowar bajra rice okay uh, wheat all these are monocot plants okay so when we have already uh, put a farm of this and in between that is some kind of a dicot plants are growing that is unnecessary okay so we want to remove that so in such cases we can already uh, sprinkle or we can sprinkle certain uh, you know mixture of this bacteria or the you know fungus and then it will automatically be killed okay or naturally that's a natural interactions examples you see microbial herbicides and their host so which are the microbial herbicides or which organisms used as a herbicide as a bio controlling agent and uh, and on to which they are feeding okay that is a host so pathogenic fungi as a micro myco herbicide myco means fungus herbicide okay so phytophthora palmivora that controls milk weeds in orchards orchards means a fruit a, a fruit gardens okay a fruit farmlands so phytophthora palmivora is employed uh for a, for as a herbicide okay alternaria crassa is there controls water hyacinth um uh, in in a sewage plant where uh, if it is water stagnant for a long time in a uh, big gutters okay so you can see um uh, that certain kinds of uh, bushy plants they are floating on to the water surface okay and they are unwanted so growth of that which shows that there is a polluted water and at certain level of growth they create a toxicity into water and they also be a 
you know uh, habitat for many unwanted pests okay and bacteria so in order to uh, you know uh, remove that contamination and that weeds water hyacinth okay we use alternaria crassa then fusarium species is a kind of again fungus control most of the weeds so fusarium alternaria is a fungus phytophthora palmivora so fungus are used as a uh, myco herbicide myco itself means a fungus herbicide means to kill or to uh, you know uh, radiate or uh, you can say erupt those uh, invasion of the weeds Another example is given a bacterial pathogens as a how the bacteria are used as a herbicide. So, Zeudomonas species they attack several weeds, Xanthomonas species attack these are common uses, but the name of the uh, bacteria are different. Zeudomonas species, Xanthomonas species, Agrobacterium tumefaciens, or earlier which was given. Uh, so, these are certain bacterial uh, species which are able to you know kill the weeds another example is insect how insect are used as a herbicide so tyria moth controls the weeds of senecio sen, jacobaic and cactoblastis cactorum controls cacti weeds okay so the accordingly the names are given so insects there are some insects which on release of them they feed directly onto the uh, desire of whichever the host plant is there which is unwanted for us okay then another role of microbes as a bio fertilizers see uh, earlier we were uh, hearing that there are chemicals like urea phosphate these are the chemicals earlier people the farmers used to use it uh, but these were somewhere causing uh, this being a chemicals and uh, because of bio magnification and bio accumulation causes a disease into the entire chain system of the food so uh, another option that it was created that which is be eco friendly and organic okay so fertilizers it is used as a fertilizer mixed into the soil or water you can directly use it or you can sprinkle it powder of which you can sprinkle onto the cropland okay so that acts as a fertilizer that adds some nutrient okay so it can be algae it can be uh, some kind of a fungus it can be algae uh, and some bacteria which lives in a symbiotic association like nostro gazola and all these are pteridophytes okay so um pteridophytes means they are algae uh, sorry not algae it's a plant so fertilizers are nutrients which are necessary for the growth of plants and thus for the productivity of cultivated plants so use of fertilizers for increasing productivity is one of the aspects of the green revolution fertilizers are classified as a they see there are two types of fertilizers inorganic that is called chemical one and organic is called the biological one so you have heard that sometime we use a worms you know earthworms which is a good friends of the farmer okay so that what they do they uh, enhance the uh, quality of the soil uh, they do aeration of the soil they make them you know uh, uh, granular form and little you know uh, fertile one and fertile one so uh, inorganic fertilizers are synthetic where mineral salts of npk npk means nitrogen uh, phosphorus and potassium these are the basic constituent and major uh, constituents which are uh, required for the plants on a large scale nitrogen phosphate and potassium okay so these are mixed in a definite proportion and then dusted in the fill okay so non judicious or excessive use of such fertilizers lead to pollution of soil air and groundwater so soil become acidic okay non judicial uses means uh, if you do not uh, you know if you do not be a cautious enough that then it caused the pollution if it is non-judicious means excessive use okay so excessive use of chemical uh, fertilizers or inorganic fertilizers that adds uh, more that that you know increases the ph level of the soil and as a result soil becomes infertile and acidic correct so uh, that creates a problem then what is another option is that what is a good for us is that 
organic fertilizers are biological so organic fertilizers are what they are biological means somewhere we are adding bacteria algae fungi or whichever microbes are uh, healthy and it is useful okay so organic fertilizers are biological in origin and includes farm yard manure farm yard manure manure is like cow dung okay compost and green manure uses of this fertilizers increases the fertility of the soil so this is a good quality of it that it is non toxic it is eco friendly it is healthy and whereby the first foremost thing is that we are using all the uh, microbial agent that is the organic and best quality so cow dung is utilized here okay so organic fertilizers are uh, you know this what okay so organic fertilizers are biological in origin and uh, includes farm yard manure farm yard manure means the manures which are made on the farm lands uh, they are compost and green manures so mostly organic uh, you know organic cultivation is on demand right now nowadays in india okay organic fruits organic vegetables these are on demands so use of this fertilizers increase the fertility of the soil so when someone uses organic fertilizers so um, the soil uh, has this, it retains its quality and nutrient medium moisture everything okay so nowadays for better and sustainable agriculture production farmers use bio fertilizers and practice organic farming so nowadays for better production because it is cheap bio fertilizers are cheaply available and they are eco friendly even one can on training one can make at home on a terrace even okay or they have a farm land enough so they can make it so this is on demand and it is good and practiced well so that pe most of the people can you know join this kind of occupations so bio fertilizers are mostly what what are bio fertilizers they are mostly nitrogen fixing living microorganisms so bio fertilizer when you are talking about uh, the soil is mixed up with the bacteria fungus okay so which kind of bacteria those bacteria which are able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere okay and uh, living microorganisms which enrich the nutrient quality of the soil they include what they do living microorganisms that is a bacteria cyanobacteria and fungi so fungus and bacteria these are very very helpful in making bio fertilizers and these are those bacteria and fungus which are able to fix the um, you know uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere because nitrogen is a chief constituent which is you know uh, building blocks of many kind of proteins amino acids dna okay and it makes the building blocks so that's why it is very very necessary bio fertilizers are commercial preparation of ready to use live bacterial or fungal formulations so bio fertilizers are all, it is made and it is sold on a commercial scale so it's a ready to use product fertilizers are sold by companies so it is ready to use product directly you don't need to make it it is already made by someone or some companies okay so their applications to plant soil or composting pit helps to increase the soil fertility due to their biological activity okay what are the advantages of uses using the bio fertilizers is that it is a cost effective you don't need to pay much amount okay it is very economic convenient cost effective okay and eco friendly so they play a vital role in maintaining a long term soil fertility so when someone is using bio fertilizers 
so that person is not to take every year every month again and again once this uh, you know bio fertilizers is used the bacteria and fungus automatically they multiply in the soil and they enriches the uh, nutrient content okay so it maintains those uh, quality nutrient quality the viability the fertility of the soil for a longer period of time okay so and and they they you know maintain a long term soil fertility and the sustainable sustainability correct so that is the uh, very good advantages of using bio fertilizers then let's have a look uh, about types of bio fertilizers there are two types one is you know giving a symbiotic nitrogen fixing microorganism and that is free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixing microorganisms so what does it mean see n2 n2 means when we talk about n2 n2 is what you know see what is the atomic number of nitrogen can anybody tell me atomic number of nitrogen it is 7 so if i draw electronic configuration it is something 2 and 5 yes to complete the octet it requires 3 electron so the nitrogen can share two nitrogen can share so they can form a nitrogen molecule like this n2 correct to complete its octet and they exhibit a triple bond between them so this triple bond this nitrogen is available into the environment into our atmosphere and breaking this triple bond is not an easy job okay it's not an easy job so this bacteria there are bacteria which are able to fix this nitrogen and they are able to convert atmospheric nitrogen into the ground and fix them and make it available to the plant okay so nitrogen fixing bio fertilizers the nitrogen fixing micro there are some microorganisms bacteria which convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous compounds like nitrites and nitrates via ammonia so nitrogen fixing microorganisms are also called diazotrophs okay and uh, see th these bacteria or microorganisms they are called diazotrophs okay they fix atmospheric nitrogen and convert and give to the plants so there are two types of microorganisms which are facilitating this nitrogen to the plant one is which lives in a symbiotic association with the plants and another microorganisms which live freely into the environment on the ground and being freely available then also they trap those nitrogen and they fix them okay so there is one symbiotic that is they live in mutual harmony and another way is that there are free living microorganisms so let us just see it symbiotic nitrogen fixing microorganism those are living in mutual harmony so for example rhizobium okay anabena frankia these are always associated generally with underground part they are found in underground part and mostly roots of the higher plants they are already found into the roots of the higher plants not the lower plants higher plants is all dicots variety so another is that another type of this is free living or non symbiotic nitrogen fixing microorganisms like azetobacter nostoc clostridium then bejeranchia and Klebsiella, etc. So these are certain microorganisms or the bacteria which helps in fixing those nitrogen and make it available to the plant. So you can see in the diagram here it is shown that 
how atmospheric nitrogen they are fixed by when the you know this uh, microorganisms they are harboring inside the plant roots okay and they are fixing and are making available to the plants and they are availing the nitrogen to the plants so that they can make their own food and in return to that the plants give them a shelter so this is something a symbiotic association okay and there are another free living bacteria or microbes which also makes available nitrogen then another is here in phosphate solubilizing biofertilizers we have seen nitrogen available uh, fixing nitrogen bacteria okay another uh, bacterial species which fixes the phosphorus that is we already know that nitrogen phosphorus and potassium these are the basic and chief constituent of the uh, fertilizers okay so here we are talking about the phosphate solubilizing biofertilizers so these are the bacterial species which solubilize the insoluble inorganic phosphate see phosphate it is found in environment is insoluble so they have to solubilize okay so this is done by the bacterial help so they are insoluble inorganic phosphate compounds such as a rock phosphate phosphates are available in the form of rock or solid mass so when it is made uh, into a liquid form then it is available to the plant so for example zydomonas striata bacillus polymyxa agrobacterium microsoccus okay aspergillus species is nothing but is um, um, fungus okay others are which i have just told bacillus polymyxa agrobacterium zydomonas striata micrococcus these are bacterial species so there are certain bacteria which makes available the phosphorus into the solubilization form okay then compost making biofertilizers compost making means there are some bio uh, fertilizers some organism which are used to make a compost okay uh, they are used to make a biofertilizers composting the manures and uh, enriching the microorganism into the uh, manure okay so let's have a look composting is a natural process come what is composting see biofertilizer we know biofertilizer means it's a fertilizer which is add up up with the certain kinds of bacteria or fungal colony that we know what is compost compost is a kind of a natural process of that turns organic material into a dark rich substance called a compost or humus like this dark matter so if you add this microorganism into a uh, soil or cow dung it will make a compost like a humus it will make a dark soil which is very rich in uh, you know minerals and nutrients okay so the composting process is dependent on microorganism to break down organic matter into compost organic matters are there the bacteria the the microorganism what they do they make it simpler so that the it is available to the plant at their cellular level are you getting it so there are many types of microorganisms found in active composts such as bacteria fungi actinobacteria protozoa and rotifers rotifers are these are rotifers okay so there are there are really my, many microorganisms they are in active forms are found into biofertilizers they still they are still active when they are on use okay it doesn't mean that they are died they are they keep they keep multiplying on uses okay so this is the good advantages another example is the cyanobacteria is a biofertilizers so many cyanobacteria are aquatic see they are telling many of the cyanobacteria are aquatic in habitat and they are terrestrial too there are free living there are symbiotic aerobic photosynthetic nitrogen fixing heterosis 
heterocytous or non heterocytous forms these are the see more is the variety more is the availability the more variety more availability and more uses are you getting so if you see that this bacteria are easily available and they are found in different habitat and different forms either they are found free living or symbiotic association they are photosynthetic also see if the bacteria is photosynthetic it is very good that they can charge up themselves yeah and there are heterocysters and non heterocysters what does it mean there are bacteria they are found in filament form and uh, you know certain kinds of filaments or chamber where they do photosynthesis so this particular is called a heterocyst that's the name okay it's a heterocyst so is a place where it, it photosynthesizes and makes the food yeah so example enabina nostoc plectonema osculatoria this osculatoria is an algae enabina nostoc toli tolifothrix these are associated with the lichens while enabina is associated with the plants like azolla and cycas azolla and cycas so enabina is found in association with the azolla azolla is something like a, it's a teidophyte azolla is a teidophyte so they have a two leaves one is submerged into the water and one is the area so this not enabina is found inside the uh, the leaf which is floating onto the water surface that is found in a symbiotic association also these are found into uh, the root of the cycas okay so you can just imagine how these are making available uh, nitrogen and other kind of uh, required nutrient to the plant okay so i'll just show this picture which is shown on the right hand side at the bottom this picture see this is the crop okay you can see this picture this is the line of the crops and it is submerged in a water now if you zoom it you can see at the bottom this is the water level there is a aerobic soil the soil which is found at the first layer below the water they are respiring this means they are direct contact in the water below that there are water uh, there are, there is a soil which is anaerobic anaerobic means the oxygen is not available or maybe some kind of bacterial species are found which is anaerobic so all these species they are you know making available the nutrient medium aerobic soil means there are some aerobic bacteria or algae sometime algae layer is found no these algae are found in a mutual symbiosis association they makes available a uh, nourishment to the plant okay a bed is formed green layer of bed is formed at the ground so these things are there then how fungus acts as a biofertilizers you know so um, fungus they are found basically in the root okay the root is occupied by the fungus so suppose a plant is there this is the you can see this a uh, mental sheet where uh, my pen this is this picture you can just see how a mantle of a fungus colony is found here and this is the root hair and this is the root tiers of root okay so this is the cortex layer this is the epidermis this is a cortex layer and these are blue color you can see this is a mantle or colony of the fungus so it is how superficially it is covering to the root okay so how this you know fungus penetrating inside at the intercellular level okay 
how they are and they are reaching to the endodermis. Endodermis is here. This, this is the endodermal layer. Okay. So, if we zoom it out, how this looks? See this meshes, mesh of the fungus. It's a white color. These are the cell. But rough surface you can see those are the meshes of the fungus. And this is the ectomycorrhiza. It's a diagram. Ectomyco means fungus. Rhiza means the roots. Okay, so fungus which is found inside the roots and outside the roots. Both this is a common term. So, ecto means outside. So, it is a fungus which is, there are fungus which is, you know, occupying the outer surface of the roots. But they are found in a mutual association. They are not harming. Means, uh, for what purpose they are employed? They are increasing the surface area of the absorption of water and minerals from the surrounding and making it available to the plant roots. Okay, like cycus. Cycus is a gymnosperm. So, they are providing, they are growing at much faster rate than those of the plant roots. So, fungus is something which grows at much faster rate in order to absorb and, you know, avail those nutrients to the plants. So, see, mycorrhiza is what? Is a fungus. It forms symbiotic association with the underground parts like rhizomes and root. Rhizomes and root, what is the difference? Root is actual, you know. Rhizome is a modification of a stem. Actually, the stem gets modified, it goes down the ground and behaves like a root. So, that is why it is called a rhizome. For example, ginger, um, uh, the turmeric. Okay, these are the rhizomes. So, these are found into the rhizomes or root of the higher plants occurring in thick humid forest. Wherever humid forest is there, obviously fungus will grow there because of the humid condition. So, these are discovered by Frank in 1885. There are two types, two types of, uh, you know, mycorrhizae, ectomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae depending upon where they are, uh, you know, uh, located. So, if it is ectomycorrhizae, rhizae means root or rhizome. So, it is found on the surface of root or rhizome that is, is called ectomycorrhiza. And if it is found to be harboring inside uh, the root, then it is called a endomyto, my, endomycorrhizae or rhiza. Rhizae is a plural uh, term. Okay, Rhiza is a singular one. So, let us have a look. If it is an ectomycorrhiza, they have well developed mycelium, means they have good body that forms a mantle, means network on the outside of the root. So, you can see this mantle, this picture outside, root is inside, it is not seen, but you can just see clearly how the mantle is formed, a network is formed. So, this increase, why, why they are formed? Because they are increasing absorptive surface area of the root. And accelerate the uptake of water and nutrient that is N, P, C, A, calcium and potassium. Due to this, the plant vigor. Vigor means a production. Growth and yield increases. Plant grows faster than as compared to the other plant. As compared to other plant means, um, you know, um, they the plant which is not uh, a ectomycorrhiza plant. Are you getting it? So, some hyphae of mycorrhizal fungus penetrate into the root and forms a hearting net. So, here, no, they do not penetrate to the endodermis, but they do penetrate to the cortex layer. So, they form, even they are outside, here you can see outside, but they penetrate inside till the, uh, you know, level of the cortex or region of the cortex. So, that is called a hearting net. You can see this hearting net in the intercellular spaces of the root cortex. So, they reaches with the cortex layer. 
come to the endomycorrhiza. So, there is a difference between endomycorrhiza and ectomycorrhiza. So, one can easily identify what is ectomycorrhiza. How? Once you know the, uh, you know, endomycorrhiza, okay. So, as you can see, I will just zoom this picture and you would clearly see how it looks. Now, see this red color is the hyphae of the fungus. So, this is a chlamydospores. Initially, the fungus go grows from the spores and small, small hyphae that you can say a body which elongates and grows. And it invades first to the root hair. Through that, it accelerates and it grows. Then, it crosses the epidermis. This layer is the epidermis. In root, it is called epiblema. When it is epidermis in stem, first layer. In root, the first layer, outermost layer is called epiblema, uh, which has a root hair. Okay. So, this fungus, they penetrate inside from the epi epiblema to the cortex level. And it goes inside the cell, inside the cell. It goes to intercellular spaces as well as they harbor inside the cell. Okay. So, there are two types. So, if they form a network like structure like this, okay, network like, like my, how, look at my finger projections, okay, like this, okay. If they form a finger like projections, that is a network type, then it is called arbuscule, okay. And they also form a globular head like structures, spherical. Then that structure is called vesicle, obviously vesicle, a droplet type of structure. So, together, together it is called arbuscule vesicles, okay. What they do, they take a outside nourishment, nutrients and making it available to the plants, okay. It means that they are increasing a surface area for absorption for the plants. So, they are found in a mutual and symbiotic association. There is no problem, correct? So, now see, they grow in between, in between, okay? And within the cortical, in between also and within the cortical cells of the roots. Fungal hyphae penetrate the cells and form finely branched arbuscules. So, when it is a fine, finely branched arbuscules, it is called and intracellularly. Intracellularly means it is within the cell, inside the cell, okay, and forms vesicle mostly in the intercellular spaces. You can see intercellular spaces between the two cells, if, if something is formed, that is a vesicle and it is inside the cell, then that is a arbusc as arbuscules. Okay, so hence they are called vesiculo. If both the structures are found, then together it is called vesiculo means vesicle is there, arbuscule means arbuscules is there, and some mycorrhiza. So name is given vesiculo arbuscular mycorrhiza, and in short it is called VAM. Yes. So nowadays they are described as the AM fungi. AM. So, we, they have removed V and they said that is a arbuscular mycorrhizae. The plant with VAM, what is the benefit? They are telling sometime it is not there in the plant naturally. So, that you know farmers or nutritionists, they, they purposely they employ this fungus so that it can you know make a purposeful symbiotic association with the plant roots. So, if the plants are employed with this kind of VAM fungus, they grow luxuriantly in less irrigated lands. Why less irrigated lands? See, area which is uh, uh, dried and there is scarcity of water, if so. If the plants or crops, uh, plants are not crops, plants, higher plants, if they are growing, if you are employ those plants to grow, you employ along with that this kind of VAM, then that fungus at all if there is a, some trace amount of moisture is available, 
they will definitely make it available to the plants also so they are very helpful okay so it is the plants will luxuriantly grow in less irrigated land the association of vam with crop plants helps in conversion of less productive field into the more productive field if it is field no plants is there so just simply add it it will add more luxuriant minerals and moisture to the soil so it will make the land fertile so that is the uh, big advantages okay now benefits of mycorrhiza first of all selective absorption of phosphorus zinc copper calcium nitrogen manganese bromine and iron it enhances the water uptake yes induce growth by secreting hormones also because um, mycorrhiza do secrete hormones offer protection to host plants from the other microbes by secreting antibiotics okay so these are the some basic advantages that one must know and do the same this is very very important another thing is biofertilizers microorganisms like rhizobium you can see rhizobium you can see these nodules here small small nodules into the root it's like all rough granular and spherical one this one you know see a bone type a tuber type these are called nodules these are nodules okay there are many more and the typical root you can see so what is the role of rhizobium as a bio fertilizers okay rhizobiums are rod shaped motile aerobic gram negative non spore forming nitrogen fixing bacteria rhizobium is what it is a bacteria okay these nitrogen fixing bacteria they fix the nitrogen they do a good job containing node gene so they have a node gene and nif gene two types of genes is there node means they form a nodule they by making nodule they inform that they are harboring inside the nodules or tumor like projection which is seen into this picture it shows that in each nodule they are harboring inside and they are nitrogen fixing bacteria they do fix nitrogen so if you take a section suppose this is the root and there is a nodule and root so if you take a section so that will be seen like this so how it is i'll just explain let me just explain first they form symbiotic association with the root of leguminous leguminous means those are protein producing plant like um, legumes all dal varieties pulses varieties uh, chana that is gram uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what we say um, moong dal okay paisam sataivam beans these are all pulses variety dal variety So you see now these rhizobium species are specific to the particular legume plant. What which kind of bacteria which found is found into the pisum satayam or pea plant? Same kind of bacteria is not found into the moong variety. Moong variety uh, dal or pulses uh, have a different kind of rhizobium species. Okay, so they are very plant specific. so they form symbiotic association with the root of leguminous plants they bring about nodule formation on the roots and multiply inside the nodule so nodule if it is found it means that they are inside and they are multiplied they fix atmospheric nitrogen into the organic form which can be used by plants as a nutrient so rhizobium leguminosarum is a specific to the pea and rhizobium uh, you know ambu fest to beans 
Okay, so different different rhizobium varieties are found into different plants. So I'll just show you. Let me just zoom it first. This is the root nodule, and inside that, no, you know, that each cell is having a colony of. You can see the purple color. These are the colonies of the bacteria rhizobium, and how they are growing. So first of all, they invade into the host plant that is. Uh, you know root this is the root uh, root actual root this is the xylem and this is the phloem so this is actually the root okay this is the original plant and you can see in each cell there is a colony of this bacteria and this is the extra bulging out okay nodule so here also they are harboring they are making colonies so this Protrusion of the nodule indicates that they have occupied extra space and they are multiplying and harboring inside. So this presence of nodule is indicates that there is a presence of rhizobium bacteria. Okay. Another is azotobacter. It is an important and well known free living nitrogen fixing aerobic non photosynthetic. Non nodule, it is not going to form a nodule, okay. Forming bacterium in, intimately associated with the roots of grasses and certain plants. So, this is found in a grasses like wheat, jowar, bajra, ragi. These are grass varieties and non leguminous plants. This is also all cereals variety. So, azetobacter, you remember, and azopin is found in all the pulses variety, okay. You can see here azotobacter biofertilizers, yes, ready made packet. Uh, it is used as a biofertilizer for all non leguminous plants, especially rice, cotton, and other kind of uh, you know vegetables. Then, azospirillum biofertilizer as a biofertilizer. So, it is free living aerobic nitrogen fixing bacteria associated with the root of corn, wheat, and jowar. It fixes the considerable quantity of the nitrogen 20 to 40 kg nitrogen per hectare in non leguminous plants such as cereals, millets, cotton, oil seeds. So, you, you need to remember all these names of the bacteria which is found into the all cereals variety that is azospirillum and azetobacter. Okay. Another is given in a baina. Anabena is a genus of multicellular. See Anabena, look at this. Anabena um, is an uh, algae, and you can just see if I zoom it out. Just have a look. It is a filamentous, and you can see some echinity, and there is a place of heterosis, is a place where it can photosynthesize. And uh, it, it is actually a place of, you know, Actually, um, where it fixes the nitrogen, heterocyst is a fixing place for nitrogen. So, this is multicellular filamentous cyanobacteria that exists as a plankton, it is a bacteria. Okay. So, it has the ability to fix nitrogen and also form symbiotic relation with the certain plants such as the caroloid roots of cycas and anthocerus thallus. Thallus means, uh, anthocerus means is, is a algae. This is bacteria, sorry, I told you that it is a algae, but it is not algae, it is a uh, bacteria, but it is found in association with the algae and also uh, higher plants with gymnosperms like cycas. Uh, it is found in a root. So, it has a, some specialized and colorless cells, which I told colorless cells is this called heterosis, is a site for nitrogen fixation. You want to look at this caroloid roots of the cycus. See this one. This is a caroloid root of the cycus. And this is the actual plant of the cycus. It is an avenue tree which is uh, you know planted along the roadside of the hotels. Uh, as an avenue tree and it grows, uh, it is a gymnosperm, it grows around 1 centimeter in 1 year. So, there is a slow growth. 
but whatever growth is taken that is uh, again there is a uh, you know big contributions by this uh, uh, kind of bacteria associated bacteria another is azola so it is steroidophiles if i show you this picture you know this is found in rainy season uh, where gutters and all a uh, ponds are green surface water is look greenish so that is okay so this is how azola lives one lives is like this and there is inside a kind of a bacterial colony is found so azola leaves contains cavities that are filled with the nitrogen so here this has a cavity and this is a leaves anatomy of the leaves so this is cavity filled with the nitrogen and this is the actual look of the azola leaves it's very minute okay So azola is a free floating floating it floats on water surface water fern azola plant consists of floating rhizome with small overlapping bilobe there is a this is my hand so this is by bi, bilobe leaves means leaves are like this only so one leaf is inside the water and other leaf is on the surface of the water okay so leaves and roots the leaf shows dorsal and ventral lobe dorsal means which is behind and ventral which is above so dorsal lobe anabena filaments are anabena anabena is a bacteria so it is found in azola are present in the arenchyma arenchyma is air cavity is there which fixes the nitrogen so if anabena is there it is going to fix the nitrogen azola can be used as a bio fertilizer in rice field so this is a good example Now, what is the benefits of biofertilizers that low cost and can be used by marginal farmers, free from pollution hazards, increase soil fertility, BGA as a biofertilizer that is, um, you know, uh, uh, secretes growth promoting substances, organic acids, protein and vitamins. azotobacter supply nitrogen and antibiotics in the soil so not only nitrogen but they also provide antibiotics and that's how the plant remain protected biofertilizers increase physico chemical properties of the soil like texture they increase the texture of the soil structure the ph of the soil is maintained water holding capacity of soil by providing nutrients and organic matter So, if the organic matters are available into soil, definitely uh, the moisture content will be there. So, moisture content in the soil is decided by how much uh, amount of the organic matter is available. So, it depends on the presence of the organic matter. Okay. So, they said now in our country, many bio fertilizers are available in the market to reduce the use of chemical fertilizers and thus the pollution. Okay. So. pollution free thus the pollution means that pollution free there is no toxicity no harmful chemicals is added so i think uh, i ended my this chapter is over here uh, so i think i have explained you well so i'm stopping here thank you so much